You'll be shocked to hear Tim Scott tell facts that few people know. Let's hear what Tim Scott can reveal to us. I was yeah. so happy when you tossed your hat into the race. Thank you. Um, a traditional conservative who's been willing to reach across the aisle. Yep. And I think you espouse a hopeful message, which I've missed in our politics yes. for some time. How do you plan to try to reach the near 74 million Americans who supported the former president, many of whom may have been attracted to sort of the brash approach to politics with your more hopeful, forward-looking message? I think people are hungry for something hopeful and optimistic. I believe America could do for anyone what she's done for me. Restoring hope, creating opportunities, and defending and protecting the America that we love is such an important combination, especially when I think about restoring hope. I'm a kid that grew up in a single-parent household, mired in poverty. By the time I was in the fourth grade, I went to four different elementary schools. As a freshman in high school, I failed four subjects. And so I understand and appreciate the importance of hope. You know, hope is really what we all need. We don't need Biden's empty promises of a good life and what he thinks is a prosperous country. We just need hope and confidence in the future. That's the whole secret. Democrats, 68% of independents, 70% of Republicans, 72% of African Americans, 66% of Hispanics, all agree on some form of school choice because at the end of the day, my mama loves her child more than she does Republicans or Democrats. <laughs> so the real combination is, can we find a way to make America better by having every child in every zip code have quality education? And frankly, uh, creating opportunities for me, I started off as a small business owner uh, in the late, late 1990s. It helped me achieve the goals that I had for my life. One of the most important goals of being raised by that single mother was to make sure that she had a chance to get into a garage mm -hmm. without having to worry about coming into an apartment where you're looking to your left, yeah. you're looking to your right, trying to make sure that you're safe. My goal in life growing up was to make sure that I bought her a house but more importantly, a garage. And so having the ability to live the American dream and to see these objectives that I set achieved early on in life was what I believe the American dream should be about. You know, Tim has a strong position. His plan is set up with a down-to-earth idea. He just wants everyone in this country to have a future and be able to live the American dream. That's a strong position, and I like it. Let me ask, answer the... Uh, question that you've answered does asked it or does it even exist yeah. in your mind yeah. let me uh, answer the question this way one of the things that i think about and one of the reasons why i'm on the show is because of the comments that were made frankly on this show that the only way for a young african-american kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule that is a dangerous offensive disgusting message to send to our young people today that the only way to succeed is by being the exception i will tell you that if my life is the exception uh, I can't imagine. But, but I can't. But it is. But it's not actually. Here's here's. It's been here's 114 my, years. Yes. The message is obviously clear to each and every one of you and me. It doesn't matter what color your skin is or who you think you are. Tim Scott wants nothing more than for every American to be able to live the dream. America should be free and safe, and each of us needs hope for a brighter future. So, so the fact of the matter is we've had an African-American president, African-American uh, vice president. We've had two African-Americans to be secretaries of the state. Uh, in my home city, uh, the police chief is an African-American who's now running for mayor. The head of the Highway Patrol for South Carolina is an African-American. Still exceptions. In, 19, in 1975, um, there was about 15 percent unemployment in the African-American community for the first time in the history of the country. It's under 5 percent. 40 percent homelessness and 50 percent of, of, of the folks get, in our community. 13 percent of the population. You had a chance to ask the question. I know that I've watched you on the show that you like people to be deferential and respectful, so I'm going to do the that same thing. That is true. So here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest the fact of the matter is that progress in America is palpable. It can be measured in generations. I look back at the fact that my grandfather, born in 1921 in Sally, South Carolina, when he was on a on a sidewalk, a white person was coming, he had to step off and not make eye contact. That man believed then, with some doubt now, in the goodness of America, because he believed that having faith in God, mm -hmm. faith in himself, and faith in what the future could hold for his kids would unleash opportunities in ways that you, you cannot imagine. Every kid today can look, just change the stations and see how much mm -hmm. progress has been made in this country. Send, uh... Tim Scott says that the race problem certainly exists, but now it is not as tangible as it used to be. He says that everyone today is capable of making themselves in their own likeness, and everyone in this country has a chance for a bright future. Of course, the only problem is the excuse that you feel bad and hard. What do you think about that? Write your opinion in the comments, and don't forget to watch other shocking news on the channel.